Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a fantastic book on discrete math, which is extremely good for beginners. The book is called Discrete Mathematical Structures, and it is written by Coleman, Busby, and Ross. This is a really, really good book for beginners who are trying to learn discrete math on their own, or anyone taking a course on discrete math would benefit greatly from this book. Let's take a look inside this book. This is the inside of the cover, Discrete Mathematical Structures. This is the fourth edition, and there's the authors, Bernard Coleman, Robert Busby, and Sharon Cutler Ross. Let's take a look further inside this book. So this book has been around for a while. It says uh, 2000, 1996, Prentice Hall, and then earlier editions, 1987 and 1984. So it's been around for uh, quite some time. So this is the table of contents, and if you are taking discrete math, it should appear refreshing because it goes very well with what's taught in colleges today. So we have the fundamentals, and then we have logic, methods of proof, mathematical induction, all the good stuff. Counting, so permutations, combinations, the pigeonhole principle, recurrence relations. It does a really good job on recurrence relations. Then it goes on to relations and digraphs, functions, order relations and structures, trees, and topics and graph theory. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. I really wanna to get to the meat of the book. It's really, really exciting. Semigroups and groups, languages and finite state machines, and then at the end we have groups and coding and some appendices and answers to odd numbered exercises and answers to chapter self-test and an index. This is the preface. Discrete mathematics is a difficult course to teach and to study at the freshman and sophomore level for several reasons. It is a hybrid course. Its contents is mathematics, but many of its applications and more than half its students are from computer science. That is true, so it's a little bit uh, different. I've always thought that the plethora of topics in discrete math is what made it such a hard course uh, for people trying to learn it. Also, uh, you know, a lot of the very popular textbooks that are being used today to teach this course are quite hard to read. This one is a little bit different. This one is much easier to read than several of the other uh, popular books. This is the section on recurrence relations. They do some really nice examples of using the method known as backtracking, and they explain it really, really well. Uh, it's very, very well written, and I really think this is better written than, again, than a lot of the other popular books. I've done uh, reviews on Grimaldi's book and also on Rosin's book on discrete math, which are actually also very good books but they're harder to read uh, than this book. This book is much easier to read than those books, which makes this a much better choice uh, for beginners in my view. And even if you're not a beginner, uh, it's still a really good book uh, to have with you because it's so easy to read, which makes it easier to learn the mathematics. Here are some of the exercises on recurrence relations, and you can see they're quite varied in difficulty. It starts off with really, really uh, basic problems. Then there's some simple applications of recurrence relations. And here we have some more problems here. And it just keeps going for a little while there. And then there's more over here on this page here. The authors provide solutions to all of the odd numbered problems. This here appears to be the solutions to the induction problems. So they go through and they give you solutions to actual mathematical induction problems, which is awesome. Like you don't even need to buy the student solutions manual. They're giving you the proofs in the book, like without you having to pay more for some manual. So that's really, really, really nice. Uh, it's a great, great resource. This is the section on semigroups, which might be a topic that you actually don't study if you ever take uh, discrete math, but me being the algebra junkie uh, that I am, I've read this entire section. I'm really happy that the authors chose to include this uh, because I enjoyed reading it and it goes through and explains everything really, really uh, quite nicely. It's really well written and it's a really, really good book. 
the actual proofs in the book are are well written and i wouldn't say that they're like extremely elegant or you know extremely clear i i think i would rate them as just regular you know it's what you would expect in a math book you know they're well written they're correct uh but they're not like elaborate and you know extra explanatory uh like some books are so they're just solid mathematical proofs and they will still take you you know quite a bit of effort to understand as always when you're reading a math book you know you should try to do the proof on your own before looking um at the actual proof that the author provides then if you get stuck then you know you look at what the author has done you say oh okay and that way it will make more sense if you just read the theorem and try to read the proof without really thinking about what the theorem is saying and trying to do it on your own, it's actually a lot harder. It's always a good idea to try to prove things on yourself first and then look at what the author is proving. The section on post-sets is quite good. Uh, the book does a pretty good job of explaining what a partially ordered set is. And then it goes on to give uh, several examples. Let me turn the page here so you can see some of the math. So. Yeah, they do a pretty good job explaining. And again, that's really the, the the benefit of this book is that it's a little bit easier to read than a lot of the other uh, discrete math books. I'm really curious to see if people still actually use this book, like if it's still you know being used at colleges and universities around the world. Um, I got this book uh, purely for self-study when I was taking discrete math many, many years ago uh, when I was a computer science student. And it helped me a lot. It clarified a lot of things that I found were confusing in the books that I was using for my class. So I don't know if this book, uh, again, is, is used in colleges. Uh, but if you do use this book uh, for your class and you're watching this video, definitely leave a comment. I'm really curious to see. Uh, after I make this video, I'll go on Amazon and check and see if there actually is a newer edition. I have no idea uh, if there is. This is the section on methods of proof, and these are the exercises. This is pretty good because you have answers to the odd number problems. So, you know, you work through the material, so here's some easy proofs, and you try to do these on your own. And then um, if you get stuck, you can look in the back of the book and you have a full proof. But again, uh, always try to, to carefully show things uh, on your own uh, before resorting to uh, the solution in the back of the book. It makes two things happen. One, it makes you better at math because you're thinking about the math. Two, uh, when you get stuck, if you get stuck, and, and you will, it's math, it's hard. And when you get stuck and when you look in the back of the book, the solution you read will also make more sense to you. So again, this is one of the strong points of this book is that it has actual proofs in these solutions, which make it a great, great choice uh, for self-study. This is the section on permutations, and this is really interesting, at least to me. So you see some of the problems are circled, and I don't remember if that was me, but I know for a fact that I have done tons of the problems uh, from this book, and I think I circled these. I'm pretty sure that I did these. I think this was me. In particular, this one sticks out here. Uh, how many social security numbers can be assigned at any one time? Yeah, identify any assumptions you have made. I remember doing um, that problem long ago. So. I'm pretty sure uh, I worked out uh, all of these circled problems uh, in this book. So you can see there's some writing here in, in chapter one in the book, and this was not me, but you see lots of writing here and lots of writing here. You can tell someone was really trying hard to learn the material. And this brings up a point and a really interesting one. A lot of times when I'm looking at math books, I find that there's a lot of writing in the first few chapters. Lots of underlining, lots of highlighting. You know, it's very, very prevalent uh, near the first few chapters of the book. And the further you go in the book, the less writing and the less highlighting you see. And this could be for many reasons. It could be for one, that only a few sections were covered in the course that was taught where this book was used. Or two, a darker reason could be that whoever was using this book for a course or for self-study uh, felt defeated after they made it, you know, to a certain point in the book. You know, usually when people start a course, they're motivated, they're ready to go, they're gung-ho. And so, you know, they go really hard for a few weeks and then they burn out. Um, that's very typical of math and, you know, human beings. Uh, don't burn out, right? Always take breaks and come back to it later. 
as any good discrete math book should. It has a section on the growth of functions, which is always covered in pretty much every discrete math course uh, that you take in college. Keep in mind, discrete math is usually not a course that is offered by the math department in colleges, at least in the U.S. Typically, uh, discrete math is something that is taught by computer science faculty, not math faculty. Uh, and they typically have, you know, two courses, you know, discrete math one and discrete math two. So it really is, you know, math for computer science. You actually do a, a lot of topics like this in particular uh, in this class that you don't do in other math classes. You can get an entire math degree. In fact, you can get a math degree and a master's degree in math, and you'll never study this. But yeah, computer science majors will. So it makes it kind of cool in my view. You get to study all kinds of really cool math topics that a lot of math majors never get to see. Here's something else that a lot of people who study math as their major don't see, whereas if you were a computer science student uh, or just learning discrete math uh, for learning, you would see languages and finite state machines. Again, not something that you would typically see in a regular math class that a math major would take. Uh, but if you were a computer science student, uh, you will totally do this stuff. I actually know someone who uh, does something related to this for their actual research. There's quite a bit of graph theory in this book, as is expected uh, in most discrete math courses and books. In fact, um, when I took a course on graph theory, uh, the book we used was a discrete math book. It just happened to have uh, several chapters on graph theory. So uh, then again, the course I took was called Combinatorics in Graph Theory. So it drew from you know the chapters on combinatorics and the chapters on graph theory to create that course. But we use a discrete math book. So you know you learn a lot of stuff uh, in, in this book. The size of this book is pretty good. Um, as you saw as I was making the video, it lays really flat. So it's really easy to have like a piece of paper here and you can work and you can do the problem. So it's a good, it's a good textbook. Um, highly recommended if you are trying to learn some discrete math. Overall, this is a really good book. I think this is a much better book than a lot of the other discrete math books that I've reviewed because it's more beginner friendly. Now, some of the other books that I reviewed on discrete math are a little more uh, rigorous. They have more proofs. The exercises are harder. Uh, this one's better for beginners. Um, so if you're taking discrete math or you're trying to learn discrete math on your own, or maybe you're a math major and you want to say, hey, what's discrete math? What are some of these topics that I probably won't see as a math major? Well, pick up a discrete math book. Pick up this one and you'll learn some math that you probably didn't know existed. Until next time, good luck.